Hello. In this video, we're going to look at creating a game using the Oculus Quest 2 and Unity. It will be a very simple bowling game. I'm using Unity 2.4.3 and if you check my installs, I've got the long-term support version set up for 2020, which was last year's. But in this one, we're going to actually be running the 2021 version to show you some of the newer features for interacting with Oculus Quest. The modules that I installed are for Android because Oculus is an Android device. I also have the Mac build because I'm running on a Mac. So with that installed, let's go to our projects folder. And let's start by adding a new project for the 2021 version. We'll give it a name. Bowling Game VR. And I'm going to put it on my local hard drive inside my Unity Projects folder. This will be a universal render pipeline. Let's click Create. By default, we're giving a scene of somebody remodeling a living room, it looks like. That's not really important to us, but if we go to our scenes, we can see the sample scene, which we don't really care about. Let's start by right-clicking, and let's create a new scene. And we'll name this VR Bowling. Double click it to make it the active project and you can see the generic background here in the back. Now I've got my window set up according to the layout tall. And then I took my game tab and I put it down here to the bottom. I don't use it much but it's down there. In order to work with the Oculus Quest, which we will have tied to this computer and I'll demonstrate that in a minute, we need to go to Window, Package Manager. And there's several things we need to discover here. First of all, you can see that we're looking at the packages in the current project. Well, it's a brand new project, so there's no packages. We can also look at the Unity Registry, which is all possible packages. And we're looking for one called the XR Interaction Toolkit. And if we come down here, we can see an XR Plugin Management but we do not currently see the Interaction Toolkit. Well, that's because as of now, March 2021, it's still in pre-release. So in order to get it to show up in this list, we have to click on this gear, choose Advanced, widen this window out. Down here it says Enable Pre-release. So we'll select that and then Understand and then close it. Now we can see several pre-release versions in our Unity registry. And if we go to the bottom, there is the XR Interaction Toolkit. You can see the current version. Hopefully when you watch this, it becomes mainstream. You don't have to do the advanced setup. So let's select it. Let's click Install. It's going to warn you that you're using a new input package. We'll click Yes and then it restarts Unity for you. Now when I used the earlier 2020 version, that didn't happen. So that's part of being a newer 2021. Unity has now restarted. If I scroll to the bottom, there's my Interaction Toolkit. You can see there's a green check mark, and I only have the Remove option, which means it's ready to go. Go ahead and close that one down. Now let's go to Edit, Project Settings. Choose XR, which stands for Extended Reality Plugin Management. And you can see there's currently nothing installed. So let's install that. Now we have the ability to start exporting to different devices. The one that we're interested in is the middle one here, which is the icon for Android. And under Android, we have the option to build for Oculus. So let's select that. It'll add the necessary scripts. Once it's installed, we'll close the project settings. 
And now let's go back to Scenes. You can change this from that view to this view by simply sliding the scaler. We've got our new VR bowling project that's completely empty. Let's start by adding a floor. So up here in the Hierarchy tab, we're going to right-click, 3D Object, and choose a plane. There it is. Over here under Inspector, we can choose Scale. Notice it's got X1, Y1, Z1. Well, we're going to set the X. We're going to double it so it becomes 2. The Y we're not going to change because it has no depth, and we'll adjust the Z to 2. So now it's a twice as big as normal. Now this plane is going to represent the floor in our Oculus headset. So if you've played with it, you'll know that when you set up an Oculus device, you have to establish where the floor is. Well, this is what this plane represents. Now this is kind of fun. Let's go to Materials. Let's right-click and let's create a new material. We're going to be doing this several times. And we're simply going to give this a color name. I'm going to start with black. And then I can come over here to the inspector, make sure black is selected, and I will choose my base map color of black, close it, and now I can simply drag that onto my floor, and it's now assumed that material color. Don't forget to save your project as we go along. We currently have a main camera in our project. If we double click it, we can see that it's positioned off to the side. We want it in the center. So once again, we'll go to the position. Notice it's 0, 1, and 10. Well, let's set those all to 0. And that will center the camera in the middle of our scene. Now this is the wrong kind of camera for an Oculus headset. So let's right-click the main camera, choose Extended Reality, Device Based, and we'll just use the stationary extended reality rig. Set these back to zero again to move it to the middle. Now look, when we open it up, we now have a camera inside the rig and we have a left hand and a right hand controller. Go back and select the extended reality rig. Notice the tracking origin is currently set to device. We want to set it to the floor so that when we put on our headset, the camera will adjust based on the floor. So if we're tall, it will move the camera up to the height of the headset from the floor. So save that project. Now it's time to worry about the Oculus headset. I'm going to show you what's happening in the headset using casting on the Oculus.com casting. So it's telling me that in my headset, I need to go to sharing, cast, and select computer. So let's do that. Use the right hand controller, choose sharing, choose cast, choose computer, click next, click done, and now you can see what I'm seeing on my headset. So let me walk you through this on your phone in case you don't already have it in developer mode. So I'm going to click on settings, I'm going to click on the Oculus, click on more settings, and then under developer mode, notice it's turned on. So that must be done prior to your connecting it to your computer. So the developer mode is on. I've got my head set up. I'm now going to plug it in to my computer and just kind of set it over here to the side. The very first time you plug in your computer, your headset to your computer, you're going to get a pop-up message that says, do you want to allow people to transfer files? You just have to say yes, and then you're good to go. All right, so that's done. Now we're going to come back to Unity. So under File, choose Build Settings. Notice that in our Scenes to Build, we've got the Sample Scene, which is that construction project. That's not the one we want. Instead, we want to add our open scene, which is the VR bowling game. Now click Build and Run. In our bowling game, we're going to create a new folder called Builds. Click Create. 
and we'll name this my first bowling game and click save. Now this is going to take a little while to build even though it's just an empty scene. Notice it says deploying player. We're now done with the build settings. At this point I can pull up my headset and if I pull up my browser it's taken so long that it's lost its casting. So let me reset that up for you. So hopefully you can see as I look around there's a black floor inside my gray project and I've got a left hand and a right hand controller with the little red lasers. That's all I've done so far. I will press the oculus button and quit this game so that next time you'll see how it pops up hopefully correctly. All right, let's set that to the side. Now we're ready to start building. If you hold down the right mouse key, you can kind of spin around. If you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can zoom in or out. You can also use the roller to zoom in or out. If you click on the camera object, it'll show you that. If you click on the floor, it shows you that. We're going to begin by zooming in. And I'm going to build a table to put our bowling balls on. So let's go to the hierarchy. Let's right click, 3D object. This time we'll use a cube. Let me turn this a little bit so I'm facing straight ahead. I've got the capability to move it, to rotate it, to scale it, and those are the three that we'll be using for this tutorial. So let me start by scaling it down so it looks more table-like. Then I'm going to move it down you can see it in the bottom, just above the floor. Now if I hold Option, Option and Command, I can spin. Select the table, and using the red controller, I can move it over, kind of to the side. Okay, back to materials. We've got a black material. Let's create a new material, we'll call it red, and we'll set it to red, and we'll make our table red. If I click the camera offset, you can see these lines that in my case are facing to the right. So I'm going to rotate this around so that I'm looking the same direction the camera is. That'll just make it easier to kind of visualize. I'm going to take this red table, and I'm going to move it to the front of me and then move it to the right so it's centered in my game panel down here. And if I want I can move it down. Okay, on top of this we're going to put a bowling ball. So once again, let's rename this the table and then we'll create a new 3D sphere. That's a really, really big bowling ball. We want it centered for now, so let's set the X, the Y, and the Z to zero, and then let's take the size, make it 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Now we can, with the positioning tools, move it up, and then rotate my view, so I'm looking down on the scene and move it over the table. Now, looking at it from the top, and I'm just holding the Alt key down to do this, I can see that the table is really wide. So let me click back on the table and the scale, and let me shrink it down so it's not quite as wide. I'll go back to the move and I'll drag it over toward the edge of my green box. Now, 
Now I'm going to take my bowling ball and position it directly over the table. Now, once again, the Option or Alt key, spin it down. Notice it's floating just a little bit above. I'm going to drag it up. Now, once again, inside the Materials folder, let's create a new material. And we'll do this one blue. This will be a very colorful bowling game. And I'll take my blue material and put it on top of the ball. And I don't think I got the color set. Let's try it again. There's blue. Drag it over. Close it. There we go. Now I've got a blue bowling ball. This bowling ball needs to have a rigid body so that it can be affected by gravity. So with it selected, and let me rename it here so it bowling ball. Now with the bowling ball object selected in the hierarchy, let's add a component called rigid body, and there it is. Save it. That just means that gravity will now affect it, and when we start our game, the ball will start in the air and you'll see it fall and hit the table. Now in order to control the ball, we need to change our pointing devices from red lines to hands. Now we're just going to be a, doing a simple hand. To create the hands, we're going to start by selecting an empty project, and we'll name it VR controller. And it's going to be visualized with a 3D object. We'll just do a capsule. Now that's a pretty big capsule. So let's set it to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And let's change the rotation on the z-axis to 90 degrees. That'll tip it sideways so it looks like you're grabbing a, something with your hand. All right, let's create a new material. We'll just call this one white. And it's already white, so let's drag white onto our hand. There it is. Okay, the VR controller we're going to use for the left hand and the right hand. So we're going to turn it into a prefab. So click on the Assets folder. Drag the VR controller down to make a copy of it. Once it's copied in the Assets, we're going to delete it as a permanent part of our project. Now, open the XR rig. On the left hand controller and the right hand, so shift select both. Notice that the model prefab is none, which means you can't see it. Take the XR controller and drag it on there. So both the left hand and the right hand are represented by this white pill looking thing. With the hand selected, let's take a look at all of the things that have been applied to it. Okay, there's a XR interaction line. And if you look at that, see that's the red line that we saw. We don't want a red line, so just uncheck it. And we don't need to render a line because we don't want a line. And we don't need the XR ray either because we're going to be using it with our hands, not as a pointing device for this particular game. All right, save it. We're ready to once again test in our Oculus device. So the second time you do it, you don't need to do the build settings. Now you can just do build and run, and it's going to be a lot quicker. Make sure your headset is plugged in so that it can transfer it to your Oculus at the end of this build set. I'll plug it in, follow my own advice, click retry. You can see that my hands have been replaced by pills, but I'm too far away from the table interact with the ball. So we need to make some adjustments inside of our, our scene. So let's go ahead and hit the Oculus button. Let's quit out of here. And let's make some changes and re-upload it. Pull the Option key down. Let's spin it. Zoom out a little bit. So let's start with our XR rig set to 0, 0, 0. The camera is also 000. And the main camera is also dead center. So that looks good. Now let's go to the table. It's just too far away. So let's move it back closer to the camera. And then let's take the bowling ball and also move it so it's above the table. Now let's look at it from the other direction. Notice that the floor level is right here. Well, we want the table 
to be up so that when we're standing, it's reachable. So let's drag it up a ways. And let's take the bowling ball and make sure it's on top of the table. Let's save that. Let's build and run. So we're ready to go. So I'm just waiting for the project to finish building and deploying. Once it comes to my headset, I can see the Unity. I can disconnect. I can come over here with my controllers. And if I hold down the Oculus button, it recenters the project in front of me. And I can move the move the ball around with my hands. So that's pretty cool. Now the next thing we want to do is be able to pick it up and grab it. So that'll be our next project. Let's click on our bowling ball once more. Notice in the rigid body it has a mass of one. Well that's pretty lightweight. We want our bowling ball to be kind of heavy duty so we'll change that to five. And then let's add another component called the XR Grab Interactive. That allows us to grab it. And then we're going to add to our hands the ability to grab. So once again, shift control both the left hand and the right hand. Let's add a component called the XR Direct Interactor. And we should get an error. It says you can't have the Direct Interactor while you also have these items in there. So we'll click OK. Let's come up to the ray, which we're not using. We'll get rid of it. The line renderer, let's see if we don't need that one. Uh-oh, that one we need. Let's try the line remove. Don't need that one. Let's try adding it one more time. Direct interactor, this time it adds just fine. And then we also need to add one called a sphere collider. And there it is. Let's drop the radius down to point 0.2 and make sure that we turn the trigger on. All right, now let's create a bowling lane. So right click, 3D object, cube. Start by setting its position in the middle, 0, 0, 0. And then let's scale it to five wide, 0.2 tall, because it's a thin bowling lane, and we'll leave the Z at one. Now we want to position it kind of to the edge. So once again, with the Option or Alt key down, I'll spin up so I can look at it from the top. Take the bowling alley, and we'll slide it over here. Move it back a little bit. So we're standing right about here. We'll be able to grab the ball and throw it down the bowling alley. And maybe we want the bowling alley to be, let's go back to our materials, or we could choose blue. Okay. Now we need something to throw the ball at. So I'll spin back up here. Let's change the name of this to alley, since it's the bowling alley. And then let's do a new 3D cylinder. And this will be our fake bowling pin. So we'll call it pin. The bowling pins need to interact with gravity. So we have to add a component called the rigid body so that other things can hit them. We want to keep their mass low because they need to be knocked over by the bowling ball. And let's make our bowling pins white. All right, let's scale this thing down. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right, now to position it, I'm going to rotate 
so that I'm above. Make sure that I'm on the Move tool. Drag it back this way. And then drag it out to the end of my bowling alley. This is a really big bowling pin. So instead of 0 0.5, let's try 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Notice the shadow shows me that it's up off the ground. So let's spin. So I'm looking down the bowling lane and let's drop it down. So it looks like it touches. We can zoom in with the wheel on our mouse. And we'll stick it about right there. Save it. So we've got pin one, let's duplicate it, drag it over. On the keyboard, I just hit Command D for duplicate. You've also got duplicate right here. So we'll just do three bowling pins. All right, let's see what happens to those three. All right, so let's zoom back. Spin around. I've got my bowling ball here. Let's do a duplicate that. And we'll have two tries to try and knock the pins over. We'll have a black bowling ball. And I'll move it up here just to keep things organized. So we've got two bowling balls and three different pins. All right, save it. Now, it's been so long that my headset shut down. So I'm going to build and run, and while it's building, I'm going to fire up my casting one more time. There it is. Casting actually worked, that's great. So at this point, I'm waiting for the build to finish. You can see it's almost done. It's now copying it to my headset, deploying the player. You can see it's pulling up in Unity. And you just saw the two bowling balls fall and hit the table. Now in order to play test this, I have to disconnect from this cable because it's limiting my work. So I'm going to pull that away, back up. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So there's my bowling pins. So let's click and grab. There's my bowling ball. It's about the size of my hand. And I'll just throw it and see what happens. Now that bowling ball is not going to have much chance. Oh, look at that. A strike. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty good. And I still have another bowling ball here. I can click it. I can put it down on the ground, and click it with the other hand. I can actually throw it, and there it goes. All right, so let's jump out of there, and quit the game. We've got some more changes to make. Our bowling balls are 0.2, let's try 0.3. So they're slightly larger than the bowling pin. Need to make sure that all three scales are the same, otherwise you won't have a round bowling ball. Now we're going to add a skybox. And we're going to make the floor semi-transparent so we can see through the skybox to the woods around us. I happen to be a panoramic photographer and we're going to use this outdoor river shot as our skybox. First thing we want to do is go to our materials, the black color, and instead of a solid color, let's make it a transparent color. And then we'll go to the color itself and drop the opacity from 255 down to, you know, 170, 160, whatever. The problem with that is that this second bowling ball is now see-through. We don't want that. So let's turn that one um, blue as well. Now let's go to the Assets folder, 
Let's create a new folder and we'll call it textures. This river is actually a texture. So we'll drag it in to the textures. And if we double click it, we can see that our river is there. Let's go back to materials. Let's create a new material and we'll call it VR background. With VR background up, we can now go to our lighting tab. And if you don't have lighting already up, you can go to window, rendering, lighting, and that will pop it up for you. Right now, the skybox material is a skybox mat, where we're going to make it this VR background instead. So let's drag it up there. And notice it's all black. That's because now we need to add that river picture to our VR background. So let's click this, go back to Inspector. Let's change it to a skybox with a panoramic image, which is what we have. And notice now that we can add a texture. Well, here under our textures happens to be our river texture. We'll simply drag and drop it in, and there we go. We can now see that we're outside. We got a nature, and we can look through the floor to the river below us. Let's go ahead and save our project. Once again, we'll build and run. Here we are in the middle of our beautiful outdoor game. Notice that seam where our panorama joined. I'll show you how to get rid of that in a minute. So grab a bowling ball. Give it your best shot. Um, not bad. Grab the second one. Try again. And I don't think I would win any trophies for my bowling capabilities. So you remember that line I told you about? We're going to pull up the texture, river. Make sure the advanced option is open and uncheck generate mit maps. That's what's causing that nasty line. Once you click apply and you regenerate the game, then you should have a very nice seamless background.